Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome back to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. The campaign is Horror on the Orient Express. It's available for Chaosium. I'm the Keeper of the Secrets, and this is episode four. Our recap will be given by Keith Craig as his character, Gunter Blanc. But before we start, I just wanted to mention that Chaosium is celebrating the Call of Cthulhu's 40th birthday. They've produced a Keeper Tips book featuring the collected wisdom and advice for running the game. There are tips, essays, and contributions from the many experienced and diverse Call of Cthulhu Keepers. So without any further delays, let's continue our journey into the darkness. Keep. Ah, uh, hey. Uh, London, January 1923. Well, this trip started out uh, quite nice. We met up with uh, our old friend, Dr. Smythe, attended his lecture. Then the following day, uh, Dr. Kurz noticed a disturbing article in the paper that Smythe's home had been burned down. We were contacted uh, by Dr. Smythe and went and met him. He had been badly burned and someone had carved uh, a message into his chest. Needs to say we were quite disturbed by that. But he gave us his journal, his journal and requested that we uh, look into the Zedefka Simulacrum, uh, some sort of uh, ancient statue. We were kind of debating what that could be, but something that the people that did this to him were interested in. And Dr. Smythe has put quite the weight into it that it is a dangerous uh, artifact. We gathered at Dr. York's flat, quite the impressive setup that he, he has. Uh, I must say that his uh, brandy he has on stock is quite delicious. We started reviewing the journal together. It had info on the statue. Apparently Dr. Smythe has been researching this for a while. The statue has been broken apart and spread across Europe. Uh, part of it was owned by a Viscount Genevier, a, uh, apparently a hedonistic uh, noble in uh, pre-revolutionary France who lost his head during the uh, days of terror. Another part was believed to move to Vienna, then another to Milan, Trieste, Serbia, and so Sofia. Uh, not a lot of clues on where to look in each of those cities. I mean, Paris is a large place to look, but Dr. Smythe did ask us, and so we'll try and take this on. I finally mentioned that there's an old mosque in Constantinople. It, he even mentioned that it's, well, before it was a mosque, it was a Christian church, and that it was something even before Christianity took effect. Well, we need to find some documents that tell us how to destroy this uh, statue, if we can find it, if it even exists. Well, since we are good friends and we have a little bit of time on our hands, we decided to do some of the research. Dr. Kurz, Dr. Dabrowski, and uh, Theodore Thursby, they decided to go to the Turkish embassy to try and research what the uh, carving in, the, uh, in Dr. Smythe's chest meant. Uh, apparently what it says was lost in translation. The closest that they could get was the skinless one cannot be forgotten. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Dr. Neruda, Dr. York, and myself, we went to the British Museum. Uh, unfortunately, we did not have the, uh, the past to begin browsing through the books, but Dr. York again proved himself to be incredibly in invaluable. His uh, family contacts were able to get us uh, moved ahead in the process, and we'll be able to go the next day to look at the uh, documents. We decided that maybe we should go to the university and check into Dr. Smythe's office. Dr. Neruda took quite the tumble climbing through the uh, transom window, but uh, Dr. York uh, was able to take care of him through a process he theorized was chiropractory. Never heard of this word before. Unfortunately, nothing was found in the office. Finally, we met up in the Oriental Club at our, our pre-planned time. We spent a good amount of time debating what the sim simulacrum could, could possibly be. We started looking around in the Oriental Club, and I must confess, I started jumping at shadows. Uh, everyone, I, I was probably just the paranoia, but I could have swore people were looking at us while we, we were discussing. 
next day at the British Museum, I I did not have any luck researching this uh, French vi- Viscount. Best they said was to check out the uh, Biblio- National B- Bibliotheca in uh, in Paris. No luck for Dr. Neruda in his research of the cult, but he did find out that Sedefkar is a common first name. There was uh, one famous man who uh, made the Blue Mosque in Constantinople. The name translates roughly to Mother of Pearl. Dr. Dabrowski found a reference to a, to a book that is kept at the Church of Mary Celestia. And Dr. York researched a skinless man. Found ref- references to Andreas Ves- Vesalius, who, uh, who made many famous drawings of skinned men. I recognize some of those. What the most, the one I recognized the most was where it looked like he just carved the skin off of it, off of himself, was holding it up. Since I was having no luck reviewing the uh, about the uh, French aristocrat, I decided to look back at the uh, newspaper. I noticed a curious article on the cover of it uh, on the front page, right next to where it talked about Doctor Smythe's house being burned down. Apparently, three men had been stabbed and killed at a hotel. Each had a uh, fake ID of a H. Malficat. Uh, the real Malficat is an antiques de- dealer who's elderly. I found this uh, quite curious. And again, my paranoia c- kicked in as like Malficat. That could be possibly a Central Asian, Eastern European name. So D- Dr. Dobrowski and I, we decided to go check out his business. We found nothing at his home or business. Another day of frustration. But we decided that we'll probably start planning to head over to the main, the, to the continent shortly. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> um, so what preparations, what, what preparations do you want to make before you travel you get you're going to get on a train to dover from dover you're going to take a ferry across to calais and then you're going to take a train from calais to paris and then paris is where the actual simplon uh orient express begins uh but since you're going to be staying in paris you're not going to be getting on the orient express technically it is the orient express from calais onwards but uh it's, it's really another train, and they put the Calais car on there. They put the Orient Express people in the Calais car and then attach it to the Orient Express. To make sure uh, concierge at the Carlton uh, can uh, line up getting our luggage, equipment, clothing, and such uh, over to route over to Paris. So that's we- something we definitely want to get lined up. Mm-hmm. Do we want to uh, get uh, rooms reserved uh, in uh, Paris? Yes, I think we should. And uh, we should. Does anyone have a preferred hotel in uh, Paris? I think that the uh, the Hotel de Rin from this handy travel book I have is right by the Bibliothèque Nationale, which yeah. is where we're going to do a lot of our research. So I think situating ourselves right at its doorstep would be convenient. Yes. Do they have things? Sorry, so speak. An indoor pool? <laughs> I don't know. We, do, we don't have pictures this time. Of the, the so speak, already you have uh, light hair from the bleach in the pool. And soon we will be uh, by the Mediterranean. You can get all the swimming <laughs> in you want. Excellent. All right. Just want to make sure we're not going to be in some shabby hotel. I'd also like to uh, know what the uh, rules are for bringing firearms into Paris. I uh, have a small derringer that I like to keep on me. Um, well, you will have to have all of the paperwork and licensing in place before you before you enter the country. That'll all be checked when you get to Calais. Um, you're going to have a problem carrying that into some countries. Uh, mm-hmm. Italy is the foreigners are not allowed to have any kind of firearm. However, they don't always check rich, wealthy people. They don't bother you because obviously you're not criminals carrying guns. 
So you might get away with it. But if something happens and they find a gun on you, you'll be thrown in jail. I should think if anyone among us would be adept at concealing a small yeah. firearm, it would be the prestidigitarian. Yes? Oh, yes. I, I could definitely make it disappear, but I, I'd rather just uh, be able to go into the country and not even have to worry about that. Oh, quite. I, I, I've been, I'm pretty familiar traveling about at least hunting abroad and getting the correct licenses to carry firearms for that. But yeah, some countries would probably ban it altogether. Oh, I'm sure they would. You could keep it in your trunk. Yeah. You know, without anybody caring. Mm -hmm. I will go ahead and go to a wiring service and uh, wire the uh, Hotel Durin and secure rooms for all of us in Paris. Okay. And it says here in this guidebook, uh, Teddy, that it is uh, one of the a hotel of the highest class. Oh, excellent. Splendid. It's up to snuff. <laughs> While you're in, in, uh, in London, is there anything else that you want to take with you or purchase that you think might be a necessity later on? Uh, um, yeah. Are there any books that have uh, the artwork of Vasalis? Oh, sure. Yeah. That's it's. I, don't. I mean, he's a very rather famous person. You could probably find that in a bookstore with art books. Yeah, I, I don't know if it will be uh, be particularly relevant or important, but no. Uh, but we'll we'll make sure we we bring with us all of the current materials that we've acquired the journal and uh, and anything that was given to us by uh, uh, Professor Smythe. Now what we assume because you've traveled from the United States to Europe and you were planning on being here a month each of you has a at least a, a steamer trunk um, with clothing and everything that you would need like that. So most of your stuff you can put in the steamer trunk and it'll arrive. Um, if you have suits and things like that, they're packed carefully and then they're the people who get who take your stuff to your room will unpack it and put it where it's supposed to go. Yeah, and we needed things for the transatlantic voyage and we were at a, a, you know, a, an evening dress event in the city, so only the things we will need to buy, perhaps, is if we go to warmer climates, we might want lighter things, but we'll, they will be available to us as we go. I'd like to add special instructions for my steamer trunk not to be unpacked. Okay. I will handle that myself. Mm. All right. Oh, I can unpack mine. Any other preparations? Uh, all right. Um, Professor Dabrowski had received a message. Um, well, he hadn't received a message. Uh, he had been contacted by Miskatonic just prior to you leaving for, uh, for Europe. Uh, they paid for part of his trip because a recent discovery in uh, Scotland, uh, there had been a storm and, you know, the ground there is mostly, you know, rather thin level, a layer of grass. The grass had all been torn up in an area and a uh, Neolithic uh, site had been found. And so they wanted him to go and see that. His plans then are to, to visit the site and then he'll catch up with you. Uh, via the Orient Express in Paris or somewhere else along the way. What a fascinating opportunity for Dr. Dabrowski. Yeah. If he could get out of it, he would, but this is the whole reason why he was allowed to come on the trip in the first place. Well, we'll, we'll keep him informed, I think, as best we can uh, through letters of anything, uh, of any pertinent discoveries. Yes, I think we events. will... Um... 
between communicating with Smythe and now with Dombrowski, we will have a, a small exercise in uh, writing uh, subtle public transmissions for the telegraph and so on. Have found old friend, stop. Uh, more skin than we thought, stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chestnut. All right. Not so your chestnut. final choice chestnut. is if you look at the uh, Orient Express schedule, um, you've got a choice of 7 p.m., 3 a.m., or 11 a.m. to depart. Oh, 3 a.m. Um, is ungodly. My. Well, Good. your arrival times at uh, the North Station in Paris will be, uh, if you leave at 7 p.m., you'll be there at 6.30 a.m. If you leave at 3 a.m., you will be there at 2.30 in the afternoon. And if you leave at 11 a.m., you will be arriving at 10.30 at night. 10.33. Mm. That sounds good. We get there, we get unpacked, and we go to bed, get a good night's sleep, and wake up the next day. Yeah, that I... way, we can enjoy a nice breakfast, make sure those crazy hoodlums are not upon us if they are. I'm still a little leery of those people being about. Mm. But uh, if you're not opposed to that, how does 11 a.m. departure sound? Uh, all yeah. good yeah and, and we, yeah i think that is a great idea we get there we can go right to bed we'll be have our body clock on perfect paris time all right so the train to calais is i'm sorry the train to dover is not the most comfortable uh, train it's it's a train it's a commuter train that a lot of people take going back and forth to work um, you're not on the busiest uh, the busiest time of day. That would have been the morning one. Uh, but um, it's going to take about, uh, let's see, uh, two hours to get there. So, And it's to a nice bit of country. It's a rather lovely area. Too short a journey to have cocktails on board? Well, yeah. Um, they probably have some refreshments. Um, but nothing, uh, nothing spectacular. And the train is not, the train is not really, uh, I mean, it's not as good of a train, obviously. Um, eventually, of course, they've been what? talking about building a tunnel. Um, what time of year is it? Uh, January. January. So it's cold. chilly. Yeah. It's more than chilly. It's pretty damn cold. Yeah. Chilly. Well, you know, it, it's it's good to get used to uh, to the cold if you plan on going to the ninth circle of hell uh, after you die. <laughs> mm, yeah. Well, well, I'll head to the Mediterranean. It'll warm up and all, but I have some tea on the uh, train. I'm sure they'll have some tea to drink. Oh yes, of course. But I couldn't imagine that they would actually build a tunnel connecting. Uh, England to uh, the mainland. I mean, you know, the, the so English, it's a little distressful. That sounds like something out of Jules Verne. Oh, we have improvements in explosives all the time. I mean, the Orient Express itself goes through mountains. It might be a little wild, but uh, then there's no ocean current and tide, no weather to deal with. Perhaps we'll have tunnels throughout Europe uh, in, in 10, 20 years. So as you are traveling, the one most annoying feature of the train is a little boy named Simon Johns. And the reason why you know his name is Simon Johns is because his mother uses it every other minute to scream at him because he's the kind of little boy who does not sit still. He runs up and down the corridor he you know bangs on people's seats he bangs on your seat occasionally he um pulls out 
crayons and starts drawing on the walls of the train. Good um, God. And his mother doesn't seem to do much about it. She's just, you know, uh, stop that. And then he just ignores her. He's learned over the, his few years that he can just ignore her and she's not going to do anything about it. I want a sweetie. <laughs> Um, so two hours seems like four. Mm. Fortunately, they're not taking the ferry. They're just going to Dover. Um, the, the ferry leaves after a little while. It's a fairly large ferry and people can drive on to it, uh, which they do. Um, the air off the English Channel is very cold. And uh, there is like a, a little internal area where you can sit, uh, where it's surrounded by windows just to keep warm. And there is tea. Um, the channel is very choppy. The, the boat rocks up and down and up and down constantly as it's going. And um, normally it takes four hours, but let's see if that is in fact going to happen. It is going to happen. So four hours. This is um, why they should build a tunnel, you see. I would like you all to do constitution rules to see if you get seasick. So. Good brisk air. It's good for the soul. Oh, I passed. A oh, heart. Did not pass. The mini one is a fail. I think I'm joining a <sighs> Kurt song <sighs> over the side <sighs> of the ship. <laughs> Good yeah, you're having air. a hard time. Ah, figurating. Do I have any Dramamine so that I can help uh, uh, Doctor or help Gabriel and I? I don't know. Did they have Dramamine? I think you get to decide that. No, time gets to decide that. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a good question because it might come out again. Hmm. I'm guessing it's after 1935. Just, to, just my wager. Anybody? Ten bucks? 1947. Oh, did you already look it up? Yeah, 1947. Okay. Uh, Dramamine was undergoing evaluation in 1947 as a potential treatment for fever and uterine. Okay. So home, home, home remedies is basically putting your head between your legs and yeah. hanging over the side when you have to. All right. <laughs> More lemon in the tea, perhaps. <clears throat> mm, mm. Well, it's a little rough, but I take it hard to believe they move so many uh, soldiers across this channel. Now, those of you who are not indisposed, um, there are quite a few people on board this this ferry. It's a it's a very large ferry. Um, there are people from uh, every walk of life, people who are crossing the channel for one reason or another. Uh, if you're indisposed, I mean, if you're, if you're, if you're not indisposed, then do a, a spot hidden wall. Huh, no. 33 is a regular pass. Fail. Um, so Theodore, um, as you're w w walking about, probably moving away from them all throwing up because that's just nasty, um, you notice a number of gentlemen on one side uh, that are dressed in uh, business suits, uh, but they're obviously not uh, uh, white European men. Um, and two of them have red hats in their hand. They are fezes, uh, which is a fairly you know, popular hat for the time. Um, they don't seem to be bothered by the water at all. Um, and they are just, just standing there. You just notice them uh, standing together, chit-chatting. And this is a pretty international, uh, it, it's certainly they are not Fezzes aren't unusual. 
the international congregation of people is not unusual for the area. It doesn't seem too out of the ordinary. I pointed out to uh, uh, whoever's standing closest to me, it's like, I need to get a fez like that one of these days. They look quite sharp dashing. They do, but... Hmm. Uh, are they... Are the gentlemen looking out to sea? Are they looking into the uh, ship? No, they're actually looking out to sea. Um, they all have uh, uh, a little facial hair, uh, not very. They all look fairly young, like maybe in their twenties or maybe right. early thirties. How many? Just like two or three, or there's, like there's three of them. Standing. Three, yeah, three, yeah, yeah. And in case you're wondering, they don't really look like one another. They just, mm-hmm. you know, one's tall, one's a little shorter. They're they're not fatter. looking suspicious or anything, are they? They're no. they're not, you know, no. looking around and they kind seem of to be smiling and they're animated and they're yeah. they're talking. All right, I'll, I'll get out my uh, cigarette case and walk over and I'll speak to them first in German and a- ask if they have a uh, match. See you um, oh, let's see. Um, German doesn't have any effect, although they look at you uh, uh, in a manner that, you know, they, they seem friendly. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just, uh, if you make like this, yeah. they, they Wait, when them. they When they kind of like don't uh, respond to the German, I'm going to switch to English, but uh, kind of pretend like I'm not as fluent in it. And it's like, oh, okay. uh, light, light. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Do I speak English? Uh, they, a little. It's a little hard to light your cigarette because the, the wind is blowing and there's spray and everything today. They manage to light it. You are, you are heading to uh, uh, Paris or to Calais. Yes, uh, uh, to, to Calais. Uh, back, going back to the mainland. I uh, uh, paid a visit to uh, the university in London. I'd, uh, I'd see. We are uh, we are carpet uh, salesmen, uh, Oriental carpets. Oh, uh, any luck? Well, we're going actually to uh, a place to see if we can find some uh, some carpets rare and unique uh, to bring back to London. Oh, wow. I bet you uh, see um, uh, uh, many places so uh, in in that that career field. Almost uh, following in the path of uh, who was it? Uh, Polo, Marco Polo. Sometimes. Mm. Anyways, you... good day to you. Oh, good day. I go back over to the. They say something to one another. In, yeah. In... You don't know whether it's Turkish or Arabic or right. Yeah. Go back over there or and go. Yeah, to carpet salesman. You know, we're, we're we're being paranoid. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's just a terrible tragedy that happened to Julius and Beto. It's just got me a little paranoid. I think it's well, still a little spooked that such people are after such a thing. Well, it's still smart to keep an eye. (laughs) If you were spending more time giving your nice hearty breakfast to the fishes, you might not be focused on the paranoia so much. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Neruda. It'll get better, I promise you. We'll be on dry, solid land soon. Maybe a smoke will help settle the stomach. Uh, (laughs) Uh, Are some loot fish or something? Yeah. So after a very long and uncomfortable um, sail across the, uh, the channel, um, you arrive in Calais at 6 p.m. in the evening. Uh, your train departs at 7.19, so you've got a whole hour, hour and 19 mm. minutes before your, your train departs for Paris. Maybe a bone broth uh, and some brown bread. Uh, seltzer water or something helps. Mm, yeah. 
There are a few places that are open, uh, but uh, they're closing soon. Yeah, I'll rush over real quickly to one to see if I can uh, get some, you know, some a simple bread, simple uh, uh, bakery item with some uh, seltzer water, sparkling water. Failing's at a dark beer. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea, too. Uh, or a uh, Coca-Cola. Chef, um, uh, whose name is uh, Maurice Picard. Um, he says, he says, one of my friends who are in luck, please let's sit down. Um, we are closing very soon. If you would like to save a little money, I can bring you what we have that is still available. Um, Merci. Meal, but I won't charge you full price. It will just go into the garbage. If oh, super play. Mm. So he brings you some uh, some chicken and some uh, vegetables and uh, various other things that are quite quite good. Uh, and he charges you a very reasonable amount since uh, oh, pay it hands down. No choice. choice. Mm. Uh, so yeah. where are you? Where are you heading? Uh, Do any of you speak French, by the way? Oh, yeah, uh, 21%, so I can kind of clunk through a French dialogue. Yeah. You wouldn't have better than 20? <laughs> <laughs> Strangely, for a Swiss, I have less, which, you know, I was running out of points. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> if, he starts, if he starts speaking in Spanish, though, I got it. <laughs> well, he speaks, he speaks fairly good English. Um, so where are you uh, headed to? Um, uh, we're down to uh, Paris. Uh, Paris. We, we, we are a beautiful city. Hoping to uh, connect. We are leaving on the train shortly. So it's very nice. A beautiful country, France. We love it. Been here a so, couple of before. Well, you seem to be a fairly diverse group. Is there a particular reason why you are all we, together? We, Oh, doing research for uh, various uh, university research work. Oh, which university? Um, oh, the uh, oh Miskatonic from uh, from the United States. From and the United also, States, I do I do not know this, uh, but uh, you should visit the Sorbonne, the the university here in France. It's one of the best in the world. We oui, oui, where where uh, where it's is in it? Paris. It's in oh, Paris. Oh, Savon. Merci. I'll take notes of that. Uh, let me bring you some dessert. Mm. Very, very nice very dessert. Kind, monsieur. And you have maybe 15 minutes to get back to the train or to get to the train. Yeah. Um, the Calais cars are additional cars for the uh, for the Orient Express that are added on. So it's still, once again, you have a train that is a regular commuter train with the Orient Express Calais cars attached to it. Um, they'll be transferred when you get there. However, you're not really going to be transferring. So you have the option. You can stay in the Calais car for the next, I think it's a two hour trip, a uh, three hour trip. Or you can stay in the regular part of the train and save money if that worries you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we laugh at cost. It is true. I wonder uh, what we should do about the um the is it a thousand pounds that Smythe gave us? About uh, forty five hundred dollars. To cover our expenses. I I mean I think in general we are all prepared to make these expenditures ourselves. Should we put this fund in a bank somewhere in case of emergency? And so perhaps we all have access to it. Should there be some incident, or how should we handle this? That is a very good idea. Maybe uh, looking at the countries we'll be going through, uh, maybe when we get to Paris, we've got a good bank. Yeah. Well, remember that banks are not connected via the internet. So if you put it in a bank in Paris, it's going to be in a bank in Paris. Yeah. Do we... Uh, However, we can't exactly transfer the funds each time we cross a border. 
Right. It's very inefficient and expensive. If we wire this money to a bank in Switzerland and have an account that is called, say, Chestnut 5000, uh, and we each have access to it, then we know that, and again, I have, I will be drawing funds. All of this will require strong funds from home banks, I assume, on, as we go. Yeah, we I can just, do that. Yeah, it's a practical right. issue. I don't want us to be uh, waylaid by uh, uh, some brute in an alley simply because we have a bag of gold on us that we have to carry around with us all the time. Oh, exactly. I, think what if, I mean, if we split it between the five of us in our separate mm-hmm. luggage, which will be in different rooms. Um, mm-hmm. This is also practical. It's true. Yeah, there's also good. there's also usually a secure uh, a secure place at a hotel. So you could, you know, rich women will keep their jewelry in the bank vault, the uh, the hotel vault, and that way you have, you can then take it out and go to the next hotel and stick it in. Right. I don't yeah. actually have any idea how international banking worked. I'm not sure that it did much. In- I would, I, think by, by I would think by yeah, I would yeah. think by yeah. wire, by tele, tele, you know, telegraph yeah. wire, but you're talking expediency of a couple of days. Mm-hmm. I suppose yeah. to have it right there, you can grab it when you need it. Right. We what could, currency? right? Well, you uh, you you have pounds. Uh, France uses francs, and I believe the uh, the Orient Express. Everything along the route will will honor the franc. The franc, yeah. You've uh, also got that in your guides. It'll tell you what the conversion rates. Are. Yeah, yeah. All right. So we will we, because we mostly will be on the train. We'll use francs, and then we'll. We could deposit half of it in a Swiss account that is prolific in Europe and the surrounding countries cash the other half divided amongst the five of us so that it's not all in you know not all eggs are in one basket and then say when we feel like we're getting low if we foresee that we're getting low and we have the ability to wire to the bank and have that two-day buffer especially if we know we'll be at a certain destination where they could wire it to a destination bank that we could then get to and and take our withdrawal but I like the idea of us not carrying, you know, all this gold in a single sack. You know, we don't have portable holds or anything. So, um, yeah, let's do that. Let's uh, let's yeah, put half of it I, into a Swiss account. I, I I realize you guys keep saying gold. I think it's silver. Actually, it could be. Whatever the Smythe pound, gave us, we have to transfer bags and nickels. It's a, oh yeah, pound sterling. <laughs> it's a it's a silver standard, but um, right. it's all interchangeable for something. Yeah. It's the problem. It, it, might, it, it might be paper notes. Even. You were you were yeah. speaking yeah. metaphoric, metaphorically, yes. literally carrying gold around, yes. not yeah. literally. Yeah, but if we take half of the Smythe money, again, we all have our own funds. So we take half the Smythe money, put it in a central location that we can access independently, and yeah, divide up the rest. And then as we need it, as you say, we we're spending francs on the train. But if we spend more days in Trieste than we expect, we transfer to Lira as we need. So we don't have to transfer this giant fund over and you know never know what to spend and so on. Yeah, okay. It's, it's we'll, make, we'll make that a... Uh, a, a point to take care of when we arrive in Paris. Okay. Very good. So you I feel arrive. much better, by the way. I'm sure you were worried. You uh, you arrive in Paris at 10.30 p.m. Is that correct? 10.30. p.m. Um, you have already called ahead to reserve your rooms. Um, you've informed the chef de train uh, where your luggage needs to go and so forth. And uh, it will all be automatically transferred to your rooms. It'll be waiting for you there since they don't know exactly which room each one of you is going to stay in. Right. So 
you arrive at pull up a map of Paris. So up at the top, a little to the right, is the Gare du Nord. That is the train station uh, oh. where you come in. Mm -hmm. um, the Gare is a train station. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you can see that you're going to which which hotel did you decide to stay in? Number eight, the Hotel de uh, Rune. Hotel de Rune, which is uh, right eight. up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so um, you are they they recommend you take a taxi, and they show you where the taxis are. Did you did you want to do anything in the train station before you head over to the hotel? Oh, pick up the uh, pick up the uh, the paper, local paper. Newspaper. Yeah. Okay. Second. So come through it later on. Uh, you can see in the newspaper uh, that there. Uh, the most you get on the headlines is that there is quite a bit of unrest going on in Italy right now. Yeah. You know. uh. Seems normal. Uh, this this fellow Mussolini seems to be becoming extremely popular. Hmm. Wonder what he's all about. Yeah. Um, all right, bundling sticks together. You take you take your uh, your taxis <laughs> to the hotel. Uh, you arrive and you check in. Uh, it's a very beautiful and elegant hotel. Your luggage is waiting for you, and they are going to take you up to your rooms. Um, we'll just say that you are in 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, and 106, all next to each other. You can decide which ones you're in. Your uh, luggage is brought up to your hotel, and uh, you are in, in your rooms by 11 p.m. Excellent. Okay, should we uh, should we get a uh, room for uh, Dabrowski or hope so he can be with us? Actually, we don't know how long he'll be up there. We Scotland. don't know. Yeah, he's still in Scotland, so we yeah. only need five rooms. Yeah, we'll have ample room if he decides uh, to make oh, it yeah. down. We'll know in advance. Perfect. Uh, uh, have we received? Uh, a uh, response from uh, the Bibliothèque Nationale. They are expecting us. All is in order there. We, I know we wired ahead to make sure that we had research access, but we have heard back. This is all, all in place. You haven't heard any. I mean, nothing has come to you. I don't know how it would come to you. No, we, we probably forward the... Uh request and let them know where we're staying so they could get the message to the hotel uh, with the concierge. That was just yesterday too, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can just go by tomorrow. I mean, yeah. yeah. It, they should have us on the list now. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, what, 11 o'clock in Paris? I mean, the city's just coming alive. Yes, I would not mind a uh, sherry or something. Mm -hmm. Sounds perfect. I assume that uh, this Hotel du Rhin has a handsome bar, Very nice. international clientele. Also an interesting place to see if uh, anyone unusual seems to have uh, preceded us. Yeah, let's head down to the bar and have a nightcap. Perfect. Okay. They have... I was going to ask, do they have a, uh, anything about... Uh, Show times at the Opera Nationale de Paris. Since it's right next door, you never know. Um, catch an opera. Uh, yeah. Um, the the thing is, is that the season hasn't started yet. Um, it's very very close to the season starting. Um, but uh, at the moment, there's nothing going on at the opera. Maybe rehearsals okay. for something, La Traviata, or. Uh, yeah, Le Traviata will sit out getting ready. For There's it. probably a more uh, sort of popular kind of dance hall as well. 
but that seems like a big night for me. I would like to also get a London newspaper and see if there is any further mention of the mystery of uh, Hamadavkat and his doppelgangers. Mm -hmm. I, the hotel must have newspapers from every sure. major city. Yeah. Uh, you spend some time looking through and you don't run across mm -hmm. any uh, any mention of, of that. What happened to the old man? Did he break up into three young men who all got killed? It's a very strange... Mm -hmm. Strange story. I mean, maybe you met them on the train as three carpet salesmen. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, but they they died, so they couldn't be uh, uh my friends that helped help me uh, light my cigarette. But well, you know, people have reported all sorts of ghostly manifestations uh, on and around the channel. Maybe there were ghosts. Yeah, maybe, maybe. But... Mm -hmm. but... So we have yeah. What I was just going to say. So what are your plans? Nightcap in the bar and then no, head I up. Mean, I mean, for tomorrow. Oh. Uh, heading to the, uh, I want to head to the, uh, the, uh, the Bibliotheque Nationale. Yeah, well, same here, definitely. Yes, agreed. Okay. And that's like yeah. just across the street, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Block away, tops. The, then, so if we might have excursions, for example, if we find out where the, Viscount's home was. We can visit this place and other things. But I think all of the root information we are looking for is there. Yeah. All right. So maybe you amuse yourselves as I say anything, but you're pretty tired after a long trip. Um, so eventually you all go to sleep. Every once in a while, I lean over and say, Simon Johns and watch them wince. <laughs> My mother would have never let me behave that way. Michal. New generation. If we have to change the password from Chestnut, the next one will be Simon Johns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only we know. Mm -hmm. Hell child. Uh, next morning, uh, you wake up fairly early and uh uh you uh i assume you probably go downstairs for uh for breakfast mm -hmm. yeah um you uh the the it's fairly it's a fairly continental sort of breakfast um but there's still you know eggs and sausage and some bread and some some fruit and tomatoes and things like that. Uh, the air seems um, fresh this morning. Uh, it looks like sometime during the middle of the night there was a, a bit of rain, uh, maybe a bit of snow as well. It's chilly, but it's not quite as chilly as London was. Oh. Um, still, it's winter. It's, it's January. Um, the Bibliothèque Nationale de Paris uh, does not open to the public until about 10 a.m. Uh, however, if you had some sort of research grant going on, you could probably get in at eight. You know, uh, if that's somebody they would know that they would, you know, professor somebody rather from the university is already working on a project. Um, so this morning, um, is there anything you'd like to do? I'm probably asking that a lot. <laughs> well, for lunch, Angelina's delicious, wonderful food right here, right across the yeah. street. So I just ate breakfast, though. So. Oh, this is for lunch. I'm I'm oh, we're in Paris. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Sure yeah. we don't miss a meal. <laughs> it's Francie's already planning ahead. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I'd probably uh, want to go see a couple of the sites because uh, we got a few hours before the library, uh, the 
the biblioteca opens up. What sort of site would you like to see? There's uh, not going to be too much open, open, but uh, yeah, but see the I mean, you can see the site, the physical yeah. sites. See, see the tower, Eiffel Tower, Arc de Triomphe. Arc de Triomphe. The uh, Arc de Triomphe is uh, interesting. I was not aware that it's actually also the tomb of the unknown soldier mm -hmm. for France. Um, the whole city had been redesigned. Uh, at one point. So now it's actually very nicely laid out. Uh, the Champs Elysees is a very beautiful street and lots of shops and things. Not much opens until about 10. Right, yeah. Stroll through the beautiful parks. There's a lot of uh, statues right out there, right next to the, uh, to the Louvre in Tuvieres. It's a gorgeous place. All right, so we'll say you, you wander around town. Um, eventually, you work your way back towards the, uh, the Bibliothèque Nationale de Paris, and uh, you get there as it's opening. There are people waiting to get in, uh, quite a few people. Um, the door is open. You go inside. Uh, the rooms are sort of uh, ranged into salons, um, and the main reading room which is uh, quite beautiful it's great oh, dome wow lovely Amazing. any computers i don't see any computers <laughs> yes yeah, any up. any fax machines <laughs> though that's the real question yeah <laughs> all right so you've arrived at the and there is a kind of a central desk uh, where there are people behind, you know, dressed in suits that are uh, assisting people who come up. Uh, oh, yes, monsieur, may I help you? Yes, uh, I, I sent a, a telegram the other day um, and we were researching things at the British Museum and we've come here to do a follow-up research. Uh, uh, you research and your name? That? Uh, I'm Dr. Gabriel Neruda with Miskatonic uh, yes. University. Let me, uh, let me check. Uh, and see if the paperwork is all finished. Uh, he goes away, he comes back. You notice that very similarly to the, uh, the uh, British Museum, that there are assistants who do all of the getting the books and bringing the books and everybody's wearing white gloves. Um, the, the Bibliothèque Nationale not only has books, but it's got all of the historical records, literally millions and millions of them, every little piece of paperwork and stuff like that. Um, some of them are very delicate uh, and uh, they require special handling for everything. And you're probably going to be looking for that kind of information since this, since uh, what was his certainly. name? Uh, Genevar. Uh, that's pre-revolution. Mm -hmm. So he comes over. We miss you. We have your paperwork. We can push it through quickly. Um, do you have, have you hired someone to assist you? Uh, no. Um, what, uh, what particular area are you going to be interested in researching? We can... Uh, we can we can make suggestions. Yeah, we're looking yes. at uh, pre-revolution records. Uh, pre French Revolution, pre-revolution. Yes. Um, I would suggest uh, uh, Remy uh, Vanachan. He's a uh, university student at the Sabin. Um He charges, uh, uh, I, yeah, I believe, per day, per diem, um, and he is a good researcher. He's a good man. Um, I can contact him for you, or I can give you... Oh, please, address. please do. Uh, I think we will want a, a, a couple of assistants to uh, help us, especially as not all of our French is very good. Um, we are also interested in um, some esoteric history. Um, well, I think you uh, may find uh, that Remy is quite useful. I think he speaks four languages. Hmm, very quite good. fluently. Uh, is it a Dutch name, Vennerheim? Uh, yes, I, I think he is um, uh, Flemish? A Belgian. 
Uh huh. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. So we have what we have uh, esoterica, uh, pre revolutionary history, uh, also antiquities. Do you think he is competent with antiquities? Yeah, yes, he, he's, he's quite good. Uh, let me get a hold of him. And uh, he leaves for another few minutes. And eventually he comes back. Uh, he says he will meet you here in, uh, in about an hour. Uh, Again? And of course, uh, wander about. But, uh, you know, the policies, you can't uh, take anything or move anything. Or of course. You're under observation. Would, um, would the areas of research that, <coughs> pardon me, Dr. Neruda is looking in, would they also include uh, journals, uh, any sort of journals from that time period as well? So the, uh, the problem, uh, Teddy, I uh, think here we're going to be able to look into things uh, such as a pre-revolutionary history, try to find some auctions that have occurred of certain, trying to find a sale of a certain thing. Um, true movement, like trying to trace the pieces of that of the uh, simulacra but i don't i don't know if i mean i'm definitely going to check about any more information about a cult of a skinless one um and that but i don't think we're going to have any more luck here if that makes sense what, what i would be looking for would be something along the lines of prior to the peace being marched with napoleon's army to italy um, the time it spent in Paris. Well, that's that's the thing. It was a um, it's last known. It was last known to be in the possession of Vice Count John of War. Um, we just need to figure out what what happened to it. Um, yeah. See, I'd be interested to find out not just what happened to it, but before it was it moved on did anything unusual what you know what type of uh what type of store was there a group hunting it then maybe you know that might have led to the sale of it just an idea you know, it's, it's, i think i mean or even if it wasn't sold i mean it was part of his estate and when they killed him um as we want to look at into the accounts of his life and his death to try to figure out what happened to his possessions to help track down where parts of this might be in Paris. Excellent. All right. It was, yeah, there was a piece of it that was sold, I think, but not. Is there anything that you want to do before he arrives? Mm. You might not have any idea what to do. <laughs> it's a beautiful yeah. building. You can wander about the building. And yeah, I mean, I think in the architecture, I mean, it was amazing looking. Um, eventually, as you're wandering about, um, the uh, library, uh, I guess he's the, the library executive, um, he walks up to you and following behind him is a young man. Um, and he says, uh, gentlemen, uh, this is Monsieur uh, Remy uh, Van hmm. Uh Hello, Messieurs. Uh, uh, you need a research assistant. Uh, yes. Uh, my name is, you may call me Remy. Um, what, let's, let's get this out of the way to begin with. Um, I will require, uh, let's see, uh, 50 francs, uh, Per day, uh, and um, of course, uh, I cannot guarantee how long that will be. But I will put in eight hours if necessary on a day uh, with a lunch break, uh, uh, and we will search. We will. We will. It, it will happen in three stages. We will have to spend some time eliminating what we don't think is. Uh, is going to lead us anywhere, then uh, we'll have to refine. Uh, there are millions of documents. Uh, and 
it's not, uh, I'll, be, I'll be the one actually doing the searching. So it could be hours. Mm -hmm. uh, of course. And I will, I will work whether you are here or not. Um, uh, how do you want to handle it? Uh, what, 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 uh, yes, what we are interested in, uh, we are looking... Uh, yes, give me your parameters. We want information about a certain individual, uh, a one Viscount Jean Avert. Viscount Jean Avert. We have a rough estimate of his time of death in the evolution. He, I think, oh. uh, right before the revolution. Uh, in the early uh, stages of the revolution, I believe. Yes, sir. I believe he lost his head to the uh, guillotine. Yes, he was a, he So was this a... is all pre-revolution we're looking for. Um, I will warn you, a great many uh, documents were lost during the revolution, but we will find what we can if yes. there's anything at all. I suspect this is something that happens often when a city is burned. Well, especially with uh, a Viscount, the aristocracy. They hated the aristocracy. And... Destroyed their homes and, uh, you know, chopped That is also heads. something we are interested in. If there are any records of the destruction or dissolution of the estate of Viscount John of Better and where, uh, what happened to his estate and his belongings is something we're also the fans would want to know. In particular, any antiquities or uh, unique treasures? If, uh, if he was... Um... Uh, dragged out of his home and beheaded, uh, many of his uh, belongings will have been spoils of war. They would have just been taken. It would be very difficult to track them unless we have some... Well, I'll see. Maybe we can find some list of objects and, uh, and then see if we can find them somewhere else. Yes, if, if such a thing exists, of course. I mean, that's... Uh... <laughs> Doing plenty of research myself, I know sometimes you know, there's things that you wish you could find and just can't. Uh, but if 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 there is such a record of what was taken from his estate or what was there, a catalog of sorts, that would be most appreciated if it can be found. Yes, uh, also but, his survivors, if any. I, not everyone in these families was executed during the terror. That is true. Yes. There may so be. if he has uh, children and grandchildren, and wives, and so on, mistresses, even whatever about his life you can locate is of interest. We are also interested uh, in uh, uh, if I speak for myself, forgive me, gentlemen, um, interested in um, Eastern um, mythological uh, notions uh, to what you have in terms of what was on record here in terms of uh, ancient Turkish deities, even a, even a brief catalog could be a starting place for us. Uh, there's an association with ancient Anatolia and, and our, on our friend the Viscount, perhaps. Interesting. All right. Um, and he probably gets more information, uh, you know, more details from you over the course of the next half an hour or so. All right. Well, I can begin work on this today. Um, Remy, I yes. Are you serving any other clients at this time? Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, I'm actually on a I was on a break uh, from uh, classes. And, uh, um, if I may, I would like to. Uh, if it's all right with the group, I'd, I'd like to prepay since today is Wednesday. I'd like to pre prepay for three days worth of work so that, and for your soul to be your sole client so that no one else attempts to use you for, for any other uh, um, researches. So we would like your full attention on our work. Uh, and uh, some discretion. So I would like to go ahead and prepay him 175 francs. Oh, sure, you're very generous. Um, 
So that should cover three days worth of work and discretion. That is that is most acceptable. Yes, thank you. Um, I will be your sole, sole uh, contact then. Um, shall we? Um, how do you want to handle? Do you want to come in the morning and find me, and we can discuss what I've discovered? Do you want to do it in the afternoon? Um, I, I obviously believe... we don't have a full day today. Yes. Uh, oh, I believe if we check uh, check in with you, say tomorrow in the afternoon. Um, Perhaps we have... could meet twice a day. Yeah, I was just going to say. Uh, also, because there are several of us, some of us could come in the morning, and some of us in the afternoon. We could we could have a uh, have a noon. An afternoon meal meeting and an evening meal meeting. Yeah, perfect. Mm. Uh, why don't you then? Um, why don't you do this? Come at eleven. Um, that way, I'll I'll be here at ten and be able to begin. Actually, I can probably get it at eight. I'll get a special pass for that, so you can show up at ten, mm. and we'll discuss anything that I've I've learned, and then. Um, Again at uh, uh, four o'clock, what you call the tea time? Here's here's my here's my problem. Um, I don't I don't uh, there's there's no there's no reason to have both a ten a.m. and a four p.m. meeting because by do four you p.m. Have, you'll be going home, won't you? I mean, after do you have your a means that day. I can contact you? Are you yeah, staying at the hotel? You can, you can reach me. Uh, you can reach. Yeah, you can reach us at the uh, at the hotel the the Rin. Um, but because I mean, you've established these eight hour days, and if you start at eight, I mean, by four, you're going to be done. We're going to have a meeting, and then in the morning, we're going to have another see, meeting. There's like we're just going to be discussing the same thing twice. There's like there's no there's not enough time between those two meetings. At the end of the day to the morning, where research is actually going to why, happen. Why don't we? Why don't we do this? Here is the phone number, and he he tears off a piece of paper. Here is the phone number of my flat. If you wish to call me in the evening and see if there is a reason for us to get together, uh, we could do that then the next morning. Uh, if I find something significant, I can give you and leave a message at your hotel. That that sounds like a, a more pre- more preferable arrangement. Uh, for me, if nobody else objects, if it is more on that end. Well, you can get out and go see Paris. It's a beautiful city. Ah, yes. Hmm. Well, we have a deal then, monsieur. Very good. Psst. Uh, Gunther, was weißen Sie? Yeah. Oh, Okay, so first, does he look like he understands German immediately? Probably. On high, probably. (laughs) So we won't use German, we'll just use pst. Uh, Do we want to even say the word ZF cut or wait and see if he finds it? I I would. I would wait. A day or two, we've already paid. Yeah, okay. Okay. So it's about 11.30 and Theodore's thinking about lunch already. Yeah, Theodore. <laughs> Angelina's. You've got, you've got some free time. What would mm-hmm. you guys like to do? Uh, I, was, I was worked myself up uh, psychologically to be prepared to just sit in this in the library in this beautiful city and now that I don't have to I'm a little bit at a loss <laughs> there's the Louvre right across the street oh wow the Royale yeah. well we yeah. start with a sumptuous lunch yes yeah we follow us through a lunch to us a fine meal and then we browse the world the opens up with our uh, our intestines Yes. Uh, I was looking through our uh, little uh, travel guide. We, of course, have uh, Notre Dame. So. And uh, 
the catacombs. And of course, so the catacombs are only open on Saturday, but I've heard that they are quite the uh, sight to see. Oh, yes. Are they only open on Saturday? Yeah, according to the guide, they're open on the first and third Saturdays of the month. So, for the catacombs, yeah. Wonder if we can get a personal guy for that. That'd be fun. If you ask, you probably can. <laughs> oh yeah, with enough, uh, we we've got connections. I mean, don't they know who I am? Good lord. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, if you ask around, you find that it's guided tours occur on those days, but oh, okay. they'll take your money <laughs> once you go down there with the warnings. Nothing All could right. go wrong. Well, they could go wrong. Don't go off down corridors that aren't marked. Or yeah, they, they don't have them blocked off quite that well yet. <laughs> There's literally <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of miles of them that you can get completely lost. Wow. Huh. Well, I think I like the the Louvre, Doctor Naruda. I thought uh, I've heard uh, quite quite a, a lot about that. That there's Louvre, there's uh, Notre Dame, mm -hmm. there's the University. But there, there I am thinking about work again. Oh, good heavens, me! Yeah, the University. Uh, I see enough of that. The um, the Louvre will be an all day thing. I mean, oh, you could oh, literally yeah. spend a week there, and yeah, the Louvre could be an all month thing. Uh, go out to that lovely old hunting uh, lodge that they turned into Versailles back in the day. That's just a. I do. Short. I do. You know, uh, Gabriel, you mentioned the uh, university. I actually like the idea of maybe we can double up our research uh have remy uh skillfully work through the bibliotheque nationale but maybe we could apply our senses to the university there wasn't i thought there was another library on the map also uh, there's yeah. two of them i believe yeah they uh they De Arsenal and the theaters. Mm. Yes, after lunch, maybe we should make inquiries there as well, uh, especially because um, in the specific example of private papers, because of you know family uh, circumstance, things can end up any place. You know, if there's only one document or a, or five letters that survives someone, they are not going to be repeated. So, mm -hmm. inquiries at least it's it's worth a few a few hours of our time. And for all we know, this uh, Viscount has descendants. If uh, good. even if he did not see them to adulthood himself, because. Mm. So yes, uh, a good lunch and then uh, explorations. Yes. Okay. You have a sumptuous and wonderful meal at uh, the Cafe du Monde. I don't know. That's in, that's in, that's in uh, Louisiana. <laughs> mm. um, yeah. Teddy mm. had a place for us. Oh yeah, Angelinas. That's good. Oh, there you go. Good, good Angelinas. Um. All right. So. After lunch, while you're having lunch, what then are you going to do afterwards? What, what decision did you come to? Did you want to see the catacombs? Did you want to go to the top of the Eiffel Tower? Did you want to go through the, the Louvre? Or the I feel universe? as though there was a, a great warmth toward the Louvre. We can start there at least. Yes? Oh, me. Yeah. Nice. Yes. All right. Enjoy Perhaps because of your background, because of your the arcane society and so forth, uh, certain pictures sort of stand out to you <laughs> as you're going through the Louvre. Of course, a lot of it is just beautiful and, and so forth. But uh, the Louvre. Uh, it could even be works said by Vesalius. 
Hmm. This is some rather interesting things. Uh, paintings from the revolution, all the dead bodies lying in the street, the, the nightmare, uh, St. Sebastian being shot with arrows, and Salome cutting off the head of, uh, I can't remember what his name is, and of course the Mona Lisa. Mm-hmm. The, yeah. uh, f- the fruit-headed fellow is by Archimboldo. Mm. Painted, uh, he, he uh, managed to get uh, wealthy patrons to pay to allow him to paint portraits as fruits and vegetables and coins and sea fish. Hmm. Yeah, mm. Curious period. So as you walk around, I would like you uh, to all do spot hiddens. Come on, guys. Uh-huh. Keep your eyes peeled uh-huh. for any mysterious statue pieces, guys. Zero six. Whoa. I am not looking for any specific statue pieces with my 74, which is a very yeah. much a failure. Who, who passed? I got a regular pass. Okay. Extreme. So, you know the way it is when you go to museums is that you go in here and you're looking around in here and you never like are, are all standing together because you know you kind of spread out and you start moving around. But as it is, Theodore and Dr. Uh, Kurz and Dr. York, uh, you move together into this one uh, very lovely salon with uh, paintings on the walls, mostly portraits. And in kind of in the corner of the room, not in a particularly uh, special spot or anything like that. You run across a painting that's called um, a Portrait of a Young Man, Author Unknown. And there's something striking about the painting uh, that, uh, that catches your attention. It's just a, a portrait, like a lot of rich people paint portraits, but there's just something oddly haunting about the proportions, the way that it's done. Um, the little plaque underneath it says that it was rescued from the Palace of Versailles, uh, and it was hanging in Marie Antoinette's bedroom. And hmm. nobody knows who it is. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, I assume if the subject is not known, also the painter is not known? Painter is not known. Either. And yet it's very accomplished. It's very you know, beautiful painting. Do they have a like circa uh, vague year? Well, that's Marie me. Antoinette. So, yeah, so. 17, 1780s. 1780s. Mm-hmm. Uh, hmm. I suppose I'll, I'll uh, make a note. I want to ask Crimea about um, anything about livery or something at the time. Some of these uh, court sorts of people had different colorations or different patterns if they were of different rank. And just to be clear, uh, um, Marie Antoinette could have a painting that was painted much earlier. So That is true. But it could you know, although it's very... Uh, Unlike as an oil painting and it's the degree of realism and so on. I don't think it's yeah. Yeah, place it to the mid to late. Yeah. Me. Uh, it was it would extremely be, uh, common for any anyone of nobility or aristocracy that they had their paintings painted. Yes. Also, though, um, to. Uh, to gift something, someone a, a portrait of oneself is very significant, I believe. Yeah. It's not as though you have a pocket full of self-portraits that you can hand out. Oh, precisely. And by looking at the way uh, the gentleman was dressed, he looked to be somewhat affluent. Yeah, to have your painting picture. Yeah, painting yeah. painted. Yeah, you'd have to be. Yeah. And the, yeah, embroidered the jacket, and also it looked like he had decent skin. Although, of course, they lied like dogs. Uh, 
That's something striking it's about that. Uh, but I mean, it was found in. Uh, you said it, the plaque said it was found in Marie Antoinette's uh, bedroom. Bedroom. I mean, you know, it, obviously not the king, or else they would have recognized it. They would have right. known known that. So definitely not the king. <laughs> I wonder yeah, if he, and not her brother or cousin or any other no, recognized yeah, so, nobles. So yeah, I wonder if it was a uh, someone that she uh, was attracted to. I mean, maybe he was maybe, a baker who made very good cakes, or Possibly. or maybe he was a uh, you know a dashing young viscount with a pensity for uh, decadence and, and yes, decadence and hedonism. It was this her bedroom in Versailles itself, or Trianon, which was on Versailles' property, that was her special getaway. You're muted. You've you've passed beyond my scope of knowledge. Oh, oh yeah. just just says it was her bed most shape, private so. bedroom. Where she had the most special times. Now was this was this uh, painting acquired through her second cousin, who was renowned <laughs> for it? <laughs> well, I mean, if 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 I, I go with the assumption that it was someone that she was uh, attracted to, or possibly even a paramour, I mean, it'd be in her more private area you she wouldn't want the well who was that louis the 16th was her that'd be three and on then yeah louis the 16th wouldn't want to come in there and see that hanging up no matter how uh who wouldn't want to be turned into as viewed as a cuckold uh, husband my my answer is the little plaque just said bedchamber <laughs> <laughs> it didn't say which one yeah 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 we're just here but i mean also, it's a beautiful painting. I understand why it grabbed your attention, but hmm. all right. Um, is there anything you want to do after touring around the Louvre for a few? I hours? assume that when we take a quick spin through the Turkish area of the Louvre, there is nothing that leaps out at us with equal stunningness. No, there is um, not the tower of. Sedefkar. Hmm. No, nothing like Here that. are the Sedefkar manuscripts. And a, a, a sculpture of the skinless one. An ancient Perfect. Mm-hmm. There's no Vesalius exhibit. Uh no. Well, there, there may, I don't know. Maybe there's some some stuff by like him. Um uh, you do um no, don't worry about that. Um so we'll say you're getting into the afternoon, late afternoon. Uh, what would you like to do? Walking around a museum can be kind of hard because the floors are marble. Yeah, you know. But it's quite a museum, my goodness. Beautiful. Hmm. Uh, maybe get some, uh, get up and get some fresh air. Fresh cafe au lait. Oh, oui. I'd be interested in maybe hitting up one of the other uh, libraries, one of the other bibliotheques, or possibly the uh, university, if anyone's up for joining me. I'm I'm rubbish at doing research, but I'm willing to help. It may be growing a bit late in the day to go pay a visit to the university. Then maybe we we should retire to the hotel and... and, uh, Oh, maybe, maybe we could uh, swing by the other library, see what their hours are, see if like uh, or if it just so a, a simple walk by. It's and, yeah. I would like to open every inquiry we can before we get back on the train for warmer climbs. The um, the library, the Arsenal Library, um, it is composed almost entirely of police and military records uh, mm. that were moved there after a fire. Um, and they are like in a more delicate state than the stuff at the main, you know, at the main library. Uh, mm. You'd still have to have an advocate, but um, Ramy would qualify if you wanted him to include this in his research. I mean, this is good to know because we know that a piece was carried by one of Napoleon's soldiers into Venice. Um, so any uh, 
any records of Napoleon's true movements and who was involved, officers, anything about. Yeah, we should make that suggestion when we when we meet with Remy to uh, to include this uh, uh, library in his research. Well, well, also, we, stolen works of art might have records here. This this theft or recovery of works of art, especially mm-hmm. if things were claimed as spoils of war. Yeah. From an estate of a particular Viscount. Um, yeah. I was... wonder if we can uh, 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 position us initially here, just a note that our uh, investigator from the Bibliothek should be anticipated and they might look for certain kinds of records, especially if we drop a few francs just to prepare the ground. We it can get a necessary. second researcher to just do the uh, the armor library. That'd be a good idea. So we can, keep, with our limited time, keep maximum research going. Yeah. Well, our, be... our, our limited our limited time. What is what is limiting our time, Teddy? I guess we're in a race to find this before the others do. But I don't know. You know how long we want to to go here. How long this might. We we need to be. Hey, I think, I think we, we want to, to be expeditious. Much... I do. I, I agree with you that we need to be rushed, but I do think we want to be efficient. Oh yeah, I'm not saying rush. I'm just saying we we could increase the uh, the amount of uh, items we can. One of my concerns is that we might be um, needing to travel in more than one direction before we resolve this matter, if the. If uh, the impression we have been given is correct, then we might need to gather a piece here and a piece there and learn and then return. So the more we can accumulate at each stop, the more efficiently we can manage this. Yes, I would just just hate to move uh, further along the line of uh, of the Orient Express, leaving pieces behind us. I mean, we uh, again Smythe all the more reason to find here. everything we can as, oh, as, yeah. as, as possible. Yeah. Now, um, when the government was uh, when Napoleon reestablished a uh, dictatorship, or uh, do we know what they did with the uh, records? Or any of you did they reestablish the records or try and return artifacts to the aristocracy? Uh, aristocrats I, or did I, they I that'd so. probably I be they ended up in the museum hmm. yeah, my, my specialty is in religion I don't I don't know much about uh, I know I just speculating trying to so those things went back to the church mm-hmm. it's the oh, other yeah. thing that didn't I would like you all to do spot hidden so what you're doing is you are sitting and going through Things at your hotel, travel guides and stuff like that. 84. I am not noticing anything today. Yeah. After my 006, I rolled a 96. I rolled a 97. So yeah, no. Fum, so you guys one. are tired and so forth. Oh, uh, I, yeah. Theodore. Yeah, I saw Theodore. Um, Theodore is looking through something. It's, it's a bit old. Um, it's been left here. But you find... Uh, a reference to uh, your, your French. You said you got 20. We, uh, Ein or are, are um, 21. Uh, not sure how to say that in French. Sorry. Apparently, that's why it's just 21. Not, not roll, roll for your French. Oh, no. Oh. Come on, French. Oh, there's the 90s I've been looking for. 91. <laughs> Your what you're looking at is an advertisement for an exhibit at a museum, and you're not sure whether it's at a veterinarian hospital hmm. or or I mean you, you're 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 trying to work your way through it, but there is a black and white picture, and it's horrifying it looks like a man who has had the skin stripped off of his body oh um uh the artist is 
Honoré Fragonard. Oui. Uh, and the uh, and it's the at Le Musée de École Nationale Vétérinaire La Forte. This this looks like it could be applicable to something we're looking at. If I spent more time and just ignored everyone for the next hour, could I push this roll? Sure. The, 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 the consequence if you fail is you can't figure anything out about it. Yeah, but I spend a long time and I miss a uh, hot meal. Or whatever. Please be nice. Oh, bunny rabbits. Hmm. 42. It's double my skill. So oh, it, oh. It, it never occurs to you that there's a lot of French speaking people in the building that you can. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what's that woman who just brought you your drinks is struggling <laughs> here? Well, can you can you translate these sixteen pages for me? It's not something I don't know if anyone's going to stop for. <laughs> it's just a small article. Oh. Um, I, I I had you do that, but it's it's obviously that you could. It's just one word that you're kind of getting. Yes, it is at a veterinarian's hospital, and mm-hmm. the word um, "écorché" means flayed. Hmm. Flayed sculptures. Hmm. Uh, the museum's not too far away. You know, fifteen minutes. Of course, it's daytime, and actually, it does. You're not sure that it, it's open to the public. It might be something that uh, was once open to the public, but uh, you might have to have special permission to see it at this point all those bureaucratic red tape i know if you're living in america it's uh quite a reminder of being back in europe uh, of all the rules Mm. so it's like go ahead i was gonna say it's like uh it's like henry armitage is running this entire continent Oh. <laughs> you can't go read my books without my express permission. All right, Ditch. So next morning, or did you want to call um, Renee tonight before you go? That might be a good idea just to check in with him briefly to see if there's a, if he's yeah. found anything. You're, you're muted, head doctor. Yeah, call Remy, of course, just to see. Uh, this is Remy. What can I do for you? Hello? Hey, Remy. Remy. Uh, uh, I'm Mr. Oh. Thursby. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, you were calling. No, sorry. No, no, no we no. were all calling. Please you go ahead. Oh, you, oh, speak, you speak French. We don't. We. Oui. Mm-hmm. But Remy speaks English too, right? Oui. Yes. Oh, oui. okay. So, oh, oh, Remy, Remy, have you, how, how is, uh, this is, uh, this is Teddy, how is the research coming along? Well, you've, you've given me quite a poser, monsieur. Um, I think that we have, I've worked my way through uh, a number of directions. It's, it came to a, a halt. Um at the moment, I can tell you that I did find some references, uh, very, very vague, uh, to a scandal that took place uh, at the court of Versailles uh, just prior to the revolution. And uh, there, is a, uh, there is a reference to a German Viscount. Oh. Uh, They've misspelled the name in the document. Uh, it looks like Javanier. Uh, hmm. uh, and it says that he was executed without a trial. But uh, uh, this gives me a, a jumping spot to see if I can find more records. Um, I can probably do some research at the Arsenal uh, Muse, uh, Library as well. They might have records of uh, his... Uh, imprisonment uh, because it says that he was executed uh, Hmm. which is not is not the same as being beheaded he was 
executed, perhaps for something that took place. I haven't found what that is yet. But uh, I will certainly keep you in contact. I, I will certainly tell you what I find in the morning. Oh. This is this is most fascinating. Um, oh, please do! I'm relaying this all to everyone. Right, we're right. together in, in in a hotel room. Mm. And then, did, was Remy intending to include uh, any any uh, research that might uh, that might feel like it could be uh, in the Arsenal uh, uh, library? Yes, he'll, he'll look there for uh, records too. Okay. See what he can find. Um, uh, I, I will. I'll see what I can do. That's about all that I could find today. It was quite difficult finding anything at all. That particular period's hard, but I think I've eliminated a good deal. So now I can concentrate. I can focus in on uh, specific mm -hmm. things and see what we can find. Um, see, merci beaucoup. How are you enjoying Paris? With you. Oh been to the Eiffel Tower? Uh, not yet, but we, we are loving it. It's a beautiful city. Beautiful city. Um, well, enjoy yourself. There's a lot of interesting things to see. Mm. Oh, um, we were a question. Um, oh, Dr. Dr. Uh, York, Dr. Uh, Neruda, what was the place you were thinking that uh, Remy might be able to help with as well? Maybe source uh, information yeah he yeah we already mentioned it he's going to include the uh, bibliotheque arsenal as well in his, in his research i thought there was another place to there well thank you thank you um yeah and Teddy they asked him uh, he he said it was a german name but it was spelled like jean vier what's the spelling of this name well it's not it's not jean vier it's uh right. It's gender. I Just think spell it correct, so I can see if it looks German. I think the correct spelling is J A N A V A R. J A N A. But it seems that, you know, nobody spells their last name. So when somebody writes it down, it ends up getting sort of semi translated into their language. Yeah. Um, but German, they definitely said German. Hmm. Um, this is uh, he. You think uh, he thinks uh, Teddy? This is the same Viscount, this Jan Alvar. It's the closest I've come to any uh, Viscount with a name mm. like that. I, in fact, I haven't found any other Jan uh in in the directory. So, oh, very if he has and do you have a date for this execution yet? Uh, uh, I don't have an exact date, but it would be right before the revolution. Just before, uh huh. So, so the myth we have is the, is the revolution. Mm -hmm. So before the uprising, he was executed for some other kind of offense. We, oui. uh, perhaps yeah. a moral offense. Well, I mean, it was kind of we already kind of knew he was a. Uh, he did this. Well, they're quite decadent back then. Decadent, yes. That's yeah, it. he would have to be a pretty bad fellow to get uh, himself hanged at the same time uh, Desaad was writing, I would think. Well, as soon as I shall get to uh, work bright and early in the morning. Uh, good, we'll see you, uh, speak to you in the morning or see you. Enjoy you, Paris, I mean. have, have fun looking at some of the sites. Uh, what are you going to see tomorrow? Anything interesting? Maybe Do you know of any... Louvre. Yeah. Do you know of any place that has a number of works by Fragonard? Oh, Fragonard? The... Oh, that caused quite a stir a few years ago. Um, he does uh, anatomical, very disturbing. Uh, I don't... I, I remember seeing seeing something about that. Um, women were quite shocked. I think now you have to have special permission to see it. Um, hmm. You know what they it, say: no one forgets the skinless ones. Your your doctor Edison 
um, hmm. he probably can get permission. It is a hus- It is a, a former hospital. Hmm. Hmm. Thank you. He uh, has no see, reaction, I mean, by the way, to what you said. I don't think he even really heard it. That's, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Very bad. Um, hmm. It was good night, messieurs. Well, as well. All right. So your your evening finishes up unless you have something else to do. And then... With his going? suggestion, I'm going to see if I can. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, have the uh, hotel uh, concierge uh, assist with placing the phone call to see if they can uh, get me in touch with the... Uh, uh, veterinarian museum all right yes they uh, in fact put you in touch with a woman named joelle uh duclos um uh and what sort of what do you use to persuade her uh, yes, I, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Edison York of uh, London, and I was interested in um, a uh, exhibit that I saw advertised for the Veterinary Museum uh, oh, about, I believe, uh, the flayed sculptures. Is that still oui, available? Yes, uh, yes. yes. Um, it's not open to the public, but you said you're a doctor. I, I am. I am a physician. And uh, I was wondering if I might be able to get uh, permission to uh, view the uh, exhibit for myself and uh, some companions. Um, we. Oui. Um, uh, when did you want to do this? Is tomorrow too soon? Um, I think we can arrange that. Um, say uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, 10 o'clock sounds fantastic. All right. All right, so next morning comes, you have breakfast as usual. Once again, it's delicious. Um, It's chilly this morning. Uh, There's a little bit of snow on the ground that must have fallen during the night, Uh, but the streets, it's pretty much melted. Uh, And are you going to, you're gonna hang around until 10 o'clock or so and then head on over to that museum. Uh, you arrive, and it is—it's a small hospital. Um, they're, they're, they they train and teach veterinary uh, medicine. Um, the woman meets you at the door. Uh, her name is Joelle Duclos. Uh, she says, uh, "You must be Doctor York." Yes, very nice to make your acquaintance. We. Oui. Um, she says, uh, "Please uh, come inside." Um, These are my associates. Now, what I can tell you about uh, Henri uh, what's his name? Fragonard died in 1799. Uh, technically, he was a French anatomist, uh, but he's uh, remembered primarily for his remarkable collection of flayed figures, uh, hmm. which you were seeing here. Um, 1799 yeah yeah uh nobody knows exactly how he did this uh it's and uh they are quite disturbing huh wow oh my somehow he managed to plasticize the the tissues um well, they didn't have plastics back then it's very strange, very disturbing. And there's a whole room full of these. Um, you can tell that she's uncovered some of them just, you know, last night because I had to dust some of them off. Hmm. Mm, very interesting. Um, a bit peculiar. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I have questions. Uh, let's see. Um, 
uh, he was uh, he was a professor of anatomy for six years, but he was uh, expelled as a in 1771 as a madman. Hmm. So he was not not he, they thought he was crazy back then. Well, clearly, yeah, has disturbing uh, artwork. So you still have the rest of the day. What would you like to do next? Anything curious? Curiosity killed Call of the Cuckoo player. Yeah, yeah. I well, think, I uh, if we, I would like to uh, take the uh, the Tower of Eiffel, get some fresh air, and mm -hmm. uh, perspective on all of this madness. I, I assume that when I reach the heights of it. I will not look down and see the skeleton of a great city beneath me. <laughs> Little villages in the distance and hills. No, but you do see from that height looking down, you can see the big churches and you can see Notre Dame in the distance. And you can see the, the Louvre. You can see the Arc de Triomphe down there at the other end. You can see uh, various... Um, fairly large cemeteries, the ones that were eventually closed and everything was moved into the catacombs. It's cold up here, but um, clean. And all the problems seem very small. Uh, hmm. It's quite beautiful. Hmm. The elevators in the Eiffel Tower are quite innovative because they actually move sideways and up like this instead of <laughs> straight up and down. Hmm. Uh, well. it, do we think that we are happy with Remy and his work so far? I think so. Uh, yeah. I think uh, we should um, uh, meet him for lunch and, and uh, check on his progress. I, I was thinking uh, I'd like to go look at that painting of that in the Louvre again. What I I've got a decent anthropology. I was just wanted to see does he does the painting have like German features? Not the German features. <laughs> He's probably just got European features. Oh, okay. So. Although if we had good records and perhaps Jaime could help us find this. Something about his dress might suggest whether he was from one family or another. I'm sure they have. I, I remember there was some embroidery and such. There might be hints, but they might be very subtle because otherwise, perhaps, the, given the resources that they have at the Louvre, they would know who he was, unless it is a secret, a dirty French secret. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's worth considering. Also, to see if that painting appears in catalogs or described differently somewhere else. I mean, I assume that you are thinking that he is our friend Janavar. And, if, uh, and Janavar is not a German name anymore, other than it's a French name. He might be Hungarian or something or Czech, with the name change, changing its spelling as he travels. True. Yeah, I, I, I was kind of. Uh, Again, my paranoia kicking in, but I was like, oh, he was executed, this Yanavar, you know, and for something that he did, well, being a, someone that the queen was interested in would be a good reason to execute, be executed. Yeah, yeah that's true. Also, however, if he's actually a Viscount, I mean, the whole purpose of this tedium of having royal titles and other names is that the names are consistent. How can you be a Viscount unless your father is a Viscount or the Emperor makes you a Viscount? So there should be some family record before or after of this title. And the uh, spelling is so inconsistent historically. It could be anything. Yano Ver, Yano Var, Yano Vur. Yeah. So we have to expand the search based on that, I think. Might we try the uh, 
let's see, there's the military, the Army Museum in Paris as well, that was established by Napoleon covering all of his campaigns, which have a, a wide variety of information. Maybe, maybe some information, some clues might be there from what left into Italy. Oh, yeah. Just an idea, just, just another avenue to try. Mm -hmm. So you're on your way to lunch. Everybody do a intelligence roll. Ooh. Extreme. No, not extreme. That's a hard. Will hard. I pass a roll today? I don't think so. That's um, a 90. And that's a fail. Uh, uh, hard well, success. Also hard, hard success. Yeah. So you got three hard successes. I got a hard success also. Okay, so four hard successes. Okay. So you're sitting down to eat. And uh, as you are sitting there, uh, somebody at the table next to you uh, seems to be upset about something. And you're, you're sort of half getting the French uh, as you're talking to the other words. One of the words that they say is telegram. And you all remember that you haven't checked for any telegrams. Mm. Hmm. I get the oops. Let me check that at the hotel. Maybe we could place a call to you'll, uh, you'll have to go directly to a telegraph office in this case because anything coming to you would be restant. Oh, oh, it wouldn't be transferred to the hotel where we're staying? They don't know who you are. It's going to Chestnut. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Makes sense. Perhaps, That's Dr. Good. York, you should uh, present as Chestnut's proper owner. I, I assume wherever we're eating downtown can't be far from my telegraph office. Probably not. Uh, I will uh, get an extra coffee for you. Very good. Thank you. And I will being being reminded by seeing that woman upset about a bad news she got. Oh goodness, we, we should check our for a telegram as well. So I will head to the telegraph office to uh, see if there's any any new news. Okay. Um, the way it works is you have to fill out a little form and you put chestnut down there as your code word. And they go in the back and I'm not exactly sure what they do, but they end up retrieving your message. Uh, only somebody who knows this, the password can get the message. Uh, so they hand it to you and it's in an envelope, uh, which you can open now and you can take it to the back to where they are. Yeah, so if it's in an envelope, I'll just take it and say thank you and head back and uh, we'll read it all over coffee. Okay, so you are there. Uh, you open up the envelope and this is what you see. Professor in good care, stop. Insists on continuing research, stop. We'll send you updates, restant, stop. Godspeed to you, stop. Beddoes. And I think that's where we're going to end it for tonight. Hmm. Not exactly a huge climax, but we're getting information slowly but surely. So slow. Awesome. Our players included Morgan Llewellyn, David Gasway, Stuart Lively, Keith Craig, Josh Harwood, and John Hook with yours truly as a keeper of the secrets. We have a Discord server where you can chat with our other members. You can set up private games. You can learn the finer arts of game playing, game mastering. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. If you'd like to help support our show, please visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar to a month helps us a lot. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows. And leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answering any questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of H.P. Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good game.